Welcome back to John's Films. Yeah, you're in the right spot, because check it out. Today, I'm going to show you two of the studio-only features I think are just, just amazing. That's the Beauty and the Face Refinement tool. These are open effects that are available in the color page when you add the effect from your library into your color notes. Let's start with the Beauty effect. This effect has the capability of smoothing skin naturally in a way that you really don't have to do much work. In fact, if I jump over to the automatic, you'll see there's very few controls. And honestly, it's probably all you need. If I zoom in, you'll notice she's got some texture in her skin. No big deal. But if we're going to make her a supermodel, we might as well smooth that out a touch. So I'm going to use the auto controls with the automatic operating mode and just pull it up a bit. And you'll notice I can go crazy. Start looking glamour shots from the 90s. Ugh. Or I can try and smooth it to the point that it doesn't affect her overall complexion and lose definition, but smooths out. There we go. So that smooths it out a touch. Um, and then if I want to, I can always blend it back in if it goes a little too far. So maybe I want to try and go a little too far and then blend it back down, see if that helps. That's not terrible. So that looks pretty good. However, you can hit the advanced view where you can really start to decide, you know, I really want to go crazy on the smoothing. And so I'm going to make it all blurry like this, except you have a wheel down here at the bottom, which is feature recovery. So Resolve has mapped out each of the individual areas of her face. It knows where her eyes, mouth, jawline, everything are. And it's going to take some of that away from those areas. So where I've blurred everything here, and you can see we've started to lose some definition in the eyes, you can pull that back by recovering your features. Now, this isn't the only thing that's available. In fact, I think we can do better with her skin up there if we were to use face refinement. Now, face refinement requires a little bit more work. I'm going to click Analyze. This will now run through the face. This will now run through all of our footage. And I always picture some guy sitting in a studio or a gal that does face cleaning all day for feature films watching this. But in this case, uh, fortunately, it's not that long of a clip. And it'll show you some really cool capabilities. You'll notice Resolve is now tracking, just like you would put in tracking nodes, her eyebrows, her eyes, her nose, her mouth, and her chin. This gives them a roadmap of what to touch and what not to touch when we're trying to affect the output. Okay, and we're wrapping it up, coming back. Notice that tracked it forward and tracked it backwards. That way you could get almost a perfect read on it. Here in the Face Refinement tool, we have the ability to use Beauty Automatic, Smoothing, or Advanced. Again here, however, Beauty Automatic seems to work really well. There is a place you might want to modify it, so let me show you the mask. This is what it's identified as her touchable skin in this case. You can change the mask size, in fact, if you want to include her neck or her ears, for instance. You can include those by using the face mask size slider on the side. I'm going to go with the default because it really... I want to affect her face. I want to make that really come out. You can blur the edges of that with some softness so that you don't get any hard uh, transitions in case you run into that. And you can refine it, um, which is really like a kind of noise reduction on the side of it, it seems, because it picks out some of the areas you don't want to see. Now, I'm going to uncheck Smooth Mask so we can see her face again. Really get in there and see what we're doing. Let's start with her forehead. Now, I can address all of her skin at once if I were to try and blur this up. In fact, here's what it looks like straight out of camera. And then here's what it looks like after I blur it up. But notice, I lost quite a bit of definition in her cheek, in this area between her nose, across the bridge of her nose. I don't really like that. So what I'm going to do is come down specifically to forehead retouching. And this is, this is fantastic. Because now, with forehead retouching, I'm able to come down here and change, if I wanted to, I could change the hue of it for some reason. Maybe I want to give her a fever, just tinge it a touch. Uh, but I can also individually smooth this forehead so that it smooths out and I get good skin without smoothing the rest of her face. Really neat the way that they've enabled this. You have similar controls, for instance, with the blush. I can change the hue of her blush. Let's go down and look at it. I can change the hue of her blush. Notice it peaking. You can change the saturation. Now you can see it's really there. And the size. I could make her whole cheek blush. I could make just a little spot. Who knows? 
depends on what your needs are in your particular film. We saw a forehead. Eyes are one of my favorite, and here's why. Check this out. So I'm going to jump straight to sharpening. This is what it looks like out of camera. Not perfectly sharp, but okay. However, I can recover some of that and check it out. Come all the way down here. Not quite as piercing, but if I come up, boom, all of a sudden, it is quite an amazing change. Now, you have to be careful with this stuff. A little goes a long way. Um, you can go crazy, and I've lost the bridge of her nose somewhere in here. I can try and get it back. I'm going to brighten up her eyes, but see, again, a little goes a long way. You don't want to go crazy on this stuff. I do want to pull them up a touch. I have to be mindful, though, and this is one of the things that I want to affect, uh, that I would, and this is one of the things I'd like Resolve to do in the future. Um, I'd really like, so I'm going to go back to her natural lip color. I changed that previously. I'd really like the ability to retouch her teeth because look what happens when I remove the overlay. Her teeth are actually more yellow than the whites of her eyes in this case. And they really, even before I whitened up her eyes, they were a little dark and I didn't care for it. So you have the ability to build your own mask and lighten it if you'd like. Um, you could also try and key that out, probably use a mask plus color key. Um, but Something would need to happen to this footage before I'd really want to use it in much. All right, past that, like I said, you got cheek. You also have chin. This is where you can change the saturation of her chin. Notice the bottom area. This is where you change the saturation and hue of her chin as well in case you'd given her a fever all over or something. So that's two features that are studio only for DaVinci Resolve. I think they're pretty slick. I really enjoy uh, playing with this type of stuff, and I always like to try and pick it out when I'm watching feature films. Let me know if you've used these features. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.